Okay, so let's fix this reduction gear problem. So yeah, in the last video, we had a look inside this reduction gear, um, try and work out sort of what's wrong with it, looking in the case. There's a really interesting discussion in the comments actually about the casting um, and where there's these kind of cracks. The general view was that that could be normal. Um, and interestingly, that um, kind of potentially coincides with where the lines are there. Um, so that may be normal. Um, however, this reduction kit is obviously making some noise. So I was having a little bit of fun and games getting my boroscope to work, um, to work out whether we can put the parking lock into this reduction gear. Um, I managed to get it to work and we were trying to work out basically whether these holes are tapped because this is a Z40 gearbox reduction gear and it has a parking lock um, which jams up these. Where is it? Oh, I think I've taken it. Oh, it's over there. Those ones, a parking lock pops in there to physically stop the gear from moving. Um, and it's this lock here and the pin there pops out. Some boroscope. Um, so that pin pops down and literally jams into there. Um, and this gearbox is from a Z50 reduction gear. Um, and it doesn't have a parking lock. It has an electronic parking brake on the rear um, calipers. So um, yeah, it was a kind of a case of, could we convert this box to be using the Z40? Now, if you put it on, it would work but it's just that the car wouldn't have a parking brake, it'd just have the manual handbrake. Um, so I wanna put this back to as it would be from the factory, repair it properly. Um, I managed to get the boroscope to work since I did the last video and looking sort of in and down and into those holes, um, it is actually tapped. So you could potentially fit it. Um, it's missing the collar. So there's, there's like a steel collar on those to give it something a bit harder to hold it from sort of movement. So that would have to be moved. Obviously you have to open this up. There's always a risk when you open something that it's not gonna be quite right. It obviously has to be resealed. Um, and basically the um, Z40 box one was available. So I ordered it um, and it is there. So we now have a replacement reduction gear, which is cool. Um, I do wonder whether these, so I've got two of these ZD50 boxes, but um, they may well be required from other cars in the future. So it would be a bit um, short-sighted to kind of make it work when another one's available, basically for sort of a reasonable price. So yeah, um, that is the next job to get that reduction gear fitted onto there um, and then spin it up again and just check the noise basically, because it was making too much noise. Um, interestingly, someone was um, commenting about um, the teeth on these on these gears. So um, I put the boroscope when I was in here because this is a low, real low mileage reduction gear, um, and it's the same design as that, literally the same inside, just with the parking lock um, on that one. So I had a look at the teeth on here. So I've got a picture of that as well. So if you look at these teeth, oh, I'll just turn my head to off. Um, you can see that it's nice and sharp. It goes to a nice corner, okay? Um, and yeah, it all looks good. Obviously really minimal wear on that, so that's nice. Um, and I was looking down onto this cog, and if we look on this one, oh, turn the torch back up. We can see that there's quite a bit of wear there. There's actually sort of corner wear there. And if I can get that to focus, so you can see there where it's sort of pushed the metal over. So you can kind of see there's wear on there that's not um, on the low mileage one. So that's quite interesting. And that exists on all of the cogs um, that I looked at in this box. So if we look at the big one, you can see that wear on the corner there. Uh, let's see if we can get a slightly better shot of it. You can see that, that corner. It seems to have a bit of a corner that's not on the other one, but also that kind of additional wear there. Yeah, it doesn't look, great does it so yeah maybe these cogs are all just a little bit worn and a little bit noisy um and that's too much noise for me um yeah because i want this vehicle to be reliable and um and work for the new owner so yeah fortunately that box was available and we're going to put that on and see what happens so yeah any other thoughts or other things you want to look at let me know um it was interesting opening this up it's good to know how they work and if that box isn't available then i would open this up um, I'd obviously have to work out how to try and remove those collars. Um, but yeah, if that was the only option, we'd have to do it. But it's, it's always better just to have a, a simple solution, less risk of issues. Um, obviously, we've been doing the 
motor bearings on this so it's a reasonably complex job um, and there's always a potential if you open up a unit that you cause a problem so yeah i'll get that box on um, and then we'll see what it sounds like and right catch you in a bit okay so we're getting somewhere now so we've got the just move this out of the way. Ooh, we've got the new reduction gear on there so when i say new it's not new it's new to this car it's not brand new um i've also put the drive shafts in so on a zoe it's got a short drive shaft here from the reduction gear because reduction gear is on this side um and then the one over the other side is a longer one Ooh, if we can see yeah so you can see it goes all the way down there so then it goes all the way to the reduction gear over the other side and then there's kind of like a bracket there with a bearing in it to sort of hold it hold it still um so yeah i've put those in place just so we can give it a bit of an easier test and you can spin it a bit more and it's easier to stop it um i have also put the rear engine mount on well, it's not really a mount it's sort of stabilizing bar i kept talking about it and actually show it but yeah there's a sort of dog bone one there that fits onto oh, there you are fits onto a bracket um, that's bolted on the back of the motor and you have to take that off because that's in the way of the bolts that hold on the reduction gear kind of like these oh, there's one there let's move this back yeah there's one there and sort of one here there's bolts all the way around and one of those is in the in the way of the you know, that brackets in the way of that bolt but that's all on so we can give it a proper test i've also um as you can see put the charging socket on so we can give it a proper test, make sure it spins, that it sounds better, um, and also that it charges. So if we just hop inside. So our battery charging impossible has gone away, which is good. Because that was, um, we were presuming caused by the lack of the socket. That's the brake booster and that buzzing noise. So if we start the car, a little bit fuzzy, but um, get the gist. And that started spinning. Go and have a listen. Traction control may kick in, but yeah, that's sounding a lot better. Sounds a lot better. So you can see it's, it sort of spins the wheels forwards and backwards, um, and that's kind of like a um, traction thing. So it's trying to sort of see if the car's going to roll, and that's just how the Zoe's do it. It kind of goes forward and backwards. Yeah, that sounds a lot better. You can still hear a reduction gear noise, but you kind of expect that. But that grindy, that sort of loud grindy noise has gone away. So fantastic, let's just stop that. I put the drive shafts in because it's a lot easier to stop the car. Um, just having more things in, making it more stable. That's kind of then just slightly easier. So I'm just going to brake gently. Oh, good for cleaning up the discs. And then we can put that back into park and turn it off. Right, okay, cool. So, um, replacement reduction gear seems to have done the job. That's now nowhere near as noisy. To be honest, um, if you remember, if you've sort of watched this little video series from the start, the splines, the output shaft splines on the motor did have a little bit of wear on, and there will obviously be, um, or is likely to be, um, similar wear inside the motor, or inside the reduction gear, sorry. Oh, we can actually see. Um, so, that will be where will that be ah that'll be on here so this is where the motor goes into there'll be similar wear in here you can actually see they're slightly off center aren't they sorry this light's not perfect because i'm trying to get the camera in there and then the um like oh yeah yeah you can see where it's folded over sort of over here you can see where there's been a bit of wear and it's pushed it over it's like kind of um a similar effect to on this big gear where the I can literally feel a lip there where it's sort of heated and worn and pushed a little lip over. And this is a real hardened metal. These are these are surprisingly heavy. But yeah, so it's sort of no bad thing to have a new reduction gear on just for the sort of longevity and um yeah of the vehicle just to keep it working for a long period. So yes, yeah, so we've got no errors now. Um it starts and spins and sounds good, does what it should do. So let's just give it a charging test. So I've got my type two. This is just on a three pin cable and I'll try and do this one handed. Let's just plug that in. Now, obviously we've got no um, cooling at the minute. So this is gonna be a brief test, but we just wanna see that this charges. Oh, there was a click then. We just wanna see this charges. Yeah, and it started winding. Cool. 
so that is charging it'll show a long time that's showing 13 nearly 14 hours but that's because this is a 20 this is a 41 kilowatt hour car so it needs to take on about 20 kilowatt hours and we're on a granny cable and it's balancing so it's got like you know quite a bit of charging to do um but yeah i'm going to turn it off because i've got no cooling i mean it's like zero degrees today so nothing's going to overheat but um yeah just got to pull this out before it um starts charging again sorry one hand so yeah cool so that is starting spinning the motor um it sounds okay it's charging and i think i think that is good um yeah i think that's good so we're going the right direction uh motor isn't making any noise at all which is perfect really difficult when you do a major job like a motor rebuild with bearings to know the long-term um, reliability i mean obviously you can't test that when it's like this it's got to be back together on the road do a decent amount of miles i have rebuilt a few motors so i'm kind of um reasonably confident with that but you never exactly know um you know what it's going to be like how you've handled the bearings how you've put the bearings on all that kind of stuff um but um yeah so far the few i've done have, have been good i sort of take my time i generally don't do something unless i'm happy with it basically especially something like motor bearings where it takes about 10 hours to change a motor you know you don't want to go ahead if you're not happy at any point so um but yeah hope that's interesting um i have to say there's really interesting discussions in the comments really interesting to see how people are engaging to be honest i kind of thought doing this was interesting i didn't know if anyone else would be interested but um i've been really amazed by the sort of engagement people are interested and yeah it's just really nice to see i try and sort of reply to comments and stuff um so uh but yeah do just sort of drop any questions if you haven't subscribed that would be fantastic um and uh yeah questions or other comments or um yeah that kind of stuff so i think this is pretty good to continue with the rebuild so what else have we got to do well there's one or two things see that charging socket needs to start off again now that's just for testing purposes um we can kind of look around and see what's um what's required so we've got like a subframe there We've got the radiator pack there under that rag, um, arch liners. We've got the top um, slam panel that runs across the top. Um, what else have we got? There's a crash panel over there. That's got to go back on. We've got arch liners under trays. Don't worry about all that stuff. That's just some parts. Um, so yeah, a lot of rebuilding. Probably, probably three hours or something like that of rebuilding. And um, yeah, then um basically get this on the road and do some more testing the mot is actually expired so we'll need an mot so yeah brief brief test down to the mot center and if that looks okay then yeah get it mot so yeah hope that's interesting and i'll catch you later cheers